we have reached the last session of our spiritual identity series. We spent the last 12 weeks seeking the Lord for a true sense of our identity. A true sense of identity that's not based on other people, not based on situations, not based on our works, not based on our individual thoughts or feelings in the moment, but based on the gospel of Jesus Christ. We've been intentional to dig into common areas that skew our identity and common places where our, we can misplace our identity. We have invited the Lord into our insecurities. We've asked him to show us idols in our lives. We have called on him to redeem our families of origin. We've sought him to heal our wounds. We have invited him to speak truth into our narratives. And we've turned to him to clarify what it means to be made in his image. All of this to build our identity on the certainty of Christ himself and clarify the identity that we have received from him, our true spiritual identity. Now, this is clearly not the end of this journey. The journey to a mature and abiding sense of our identity in Christ will only end when we meet Jesus face to face. But I hope you have gained some wisdom and some experience to continue the process of solidifying your identity on Jesus, on the truth of his word. It is by faith in Jesus that we leave everything we once were behind and everything that once defined us behind. In him, we are a new creation, a child of God made righteous by our Father, a living reflection of Christ. Listen again to the words God uses to define you. But to all who have believed Christ and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, and behold, the new has come. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us, and we speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. By grace, through faith, you are now in Christ. You are destined to become the man or woman that the Father created you to be, that Christ redeemed you to be, and that the Spirit is empowering you to be. Or, as Colossians 3.3 3 would say, for you have died to this life, and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. So as you continue this journey of walking out your gospel identity, I want to leave you with a few truths to keep you as you go. Firstly, remember that your connection or connectedness to Jesus is the defining factor for your identity. If you are not seeking Jesus to tell you who and whose you are, other people and other sources will, and inevitably, that will be the defining voice you hear in your life and you use to define everything about yourself. And this seeking Jesus is not just a one-time event. It's not a, well, God once told me. We need Jesus and his words daily to speak truth into our hearts. It's a daily of coming to Jesus and, and saying, this is what God is telling me. So again, your connectedness to Jesus is of most importance. Remember also that confession and vulnerability play vital roles in the Christian community and in your own spiritual growth. In Christ, there is no fear or shame from past wounds or present weaknesses. <laughs> because of Jesus' sacrifice for you and for me, because his spirit is working in us, we can be a people who boldly live in the light as children of light, free from all secrets, free from any hiding. And it is living in this kind of community, practicing these truths, that our gospel identity is solidified and is internalized into places in our hearts that it otherwise wouldn't get. Lastly, remember the biblical truth that God has created us to live in all of life faith. This means he wants to meet you at every level of your being and invites you to give every aspect of who you are to him. There are no off-limits parts of our lives for Jesus. He wants to meet you and connect with you on the physical and emotional and spiritual and mental aspects of who you are and redeem all of those aspects for his life and glory. Or to put it another way, Jesus wants to make us more and more like him in the way we think, act, feel, and love. So my hope as we are coming to the end of this series is that when you consider who you are in Christ, 
You well up with joy and humility and thankfulness because of all God has done for you in making you his very own child. My hope is that as God's child, knowing that you were created to reflect God's goodness and character, just as a child reflects their earthly parents, you know beyond a shadow of a doubt you were created to be a blessing in this world. We are vessels of God's love and truth and grace everywhere we go and with everyone we meet. So today we are going to celebrate what God has been doing in our lives by sharing stories of his work in our hearts and our identities. For your group time, we're going to have the night dedicated to sharing those stories and those examples. So to frame your group discussion, consider how God has clarified your identity in him or ways he has shown false identities that you believed about yourself. More specifically, consider how has a true sense of your identity affected your relationship with God? Consider what changes has this true identity produced in your life and in your faith? And take time to share any stories or practical examples of these changes uh, so that others can, can walk with you more closely in this journey that you have with him. And if, if some of these stories are really deep in your heart and you recognize all that God is doing in your life and you're, you're feeling led to, how can I share more of what God is doing? We would love for you to share that with the greater church family. And you can do this by going to macmazula.com and scrolling to the bottom of the screen and clicking on the share your story with us button on the bottom of that page. We would love to hear your story and as, as opportunity arises, share that story with the rest of the church family. Or for some of you, if you need further conversations, if you have questions or fears or confusion or uncertainties about some of the things that we've discussed through this series, our pastoral team would love to meet with you and talk with you about what this life and identity in Jesus is and, and try to clarify some of those things with you. Please don't leave questions unaddressed. Please don't leave confusion or fear space in your life. We would love to sit down with you and talk more about all that Jesus offers you. So as you move into your group sharing, let me pray this blessing over you from Philippians 1, 9 through 11. I pray that your love will overflow more and more and that you will keep growing in knowledge and understanding. For I want you to understand what really matters so that you may live pure and blameless lives until the day of Christ's return. May you always be filled with the fruit of your salvation, the righteous character produced in your life by Jesus Christ for this will bring much glory and praise to God. Amen and amen.